Oh my goodness, everybody. It is Friday. We made it. So glad to have you with us today live on Houston Life. I, I was like, are you nervous? What's no, happening? I'm just saying live because <laughs> we ran into a bunch of people last night at Kendra Scott. We'll get to that in just a yeah. moment. But so many people are always shocked to know that our show is actually live. It is. I mean, we're live. It's, it's, it's one o'clock and 35 seconds. So. And Setting the record straight. And not scripted. <laughs> Nobody can script that. Well, I'm reading everything right now. I know. I know. Not true. Not true. So last night at Kendra Scott in Rice Village, Courtney had this really cool event, and a lot of you viewers showed up. This was so great. It was. It was so fun. So this all benefited Girls on the Run, Greater Houston, and um, this is Mary T. She's the executive director of the organization here in town. And what Girls on the Run is, it's a running program for fourth and fifth grade middle uh, fifth grade girls basically teaches them how to run. You don't have to be a runner, you don't have to do anything, but it's also empowering how to, dealing, how to deal with bullying, how to uh, be a good friend, how to handle some of the things that fourth and fifth graders are going through. The yeah. program does continue to middle school. Um, it's a really great organization. Of course, Joybox was there, there's best friend Lori, Derek, you were there. It was so packed. So many people came out. Julia Morales, the sideline reporter for the Astros, she showed up, um, and so many of you viewers came as well. And I'm I'm happy to report this is so awesome you guys we raised almost two thousand dollars for so girls cool. on the run of greater houston That's, and that was 20 percent of the total purchases so yes. really there was ten thousand dollars worth of purchases made last night yeah That's huge. so incredible that's what they need they need volunteers they need coaches to help and grow this program in our own backyard it's really fantastic and the gala is coming up in april so i'm so excited i'll be there to emcee that but it's just such a great organization and you know i get nervous when i throw a party i do you want people to show up yeah and yeah. i thought gosh what if nobody comes but Y'all showed up, you showed up, of course. everybody shopped, and I was just so excited. And so many fans of Houston Life, Danny and Lily yes. and Bridget, all of you, thank you so much for coming last night. We loved getting to know you a bit and, and hanging out. Yeah, it was so much fun. By the way, we're also wearing red. It's National Wear Red Day. Yes, for today, for heart health. So wear your red proudly. And wear red for women. Cardiovascular yes. disease is still a huge killer of women. And depending on your race, uh, some races are disproportionately affected by this disease. So let's all remember that uh, cardiovascular disease is killing far too many of our beloved women and uh, something we should all be thinking about. Absolutely. If you don't. If you feel something's off, go get it checked out immediately. By the way, we do have a special little shout out to our friends over at Dessert Gallery. Check out these sweet treats. Hopefully these cookies don't slide away as I pick up the box. But this is part of their Love is Love campaign during the month of February. Valentine's Day is a week from now, and they dropped off this special little delivery today, saying the campaign aspires to make Valentine's Day an empowering celebration of love in all the ways it presents itself. So we That's certainly so appreciate awesome. that. I always say it's it's fascinating to me. <laughs> I was raised by a single mom, as you guys know, and your mom is divorced as well. Yes. Anytime two people can find each other and and support each other and love each other and enjoy, truly enjoy spending time together. I think that's a miracle and worth celebrating. And Valentine's Day, again, love is celebrated in so many different forms. And I think Valentine's Day is just one day during the year we can mark that. Absolutely. And these are so great. So Dessert Gallery, the one... Uh, uh, Richmond and Kirby. Richmond and Kirby. It's in that strip mall there. It's in the near the corner. Love it. And these cookies are so good. It's so hard not to take a bite right now. I know. It's lunchtime. But dessert always tastes better. Before, Before your meal. Dinner. <laughs> Speaking of, we put up a Facebook poll, I think sometime within the last day or so, asking you how often you cook dinner at home. How often do you guys cook? These days, it's most of the time. Yeah. Or we try to. I mean, we have a lot of events out in the community where we'll have dinners. <laughs> These are our I love. poll results, <laughs> by the way. 56% of you who responded said you cook every chance you get. 44% say you avoid it at all costs. That's I find me. That there are two I'm on camps. the 44%. So you hate cooking? Is that I why? Don't, it's not that I hate it. I like it, but I'm a recipe follower. I'm not a creator. So for me, I mean, I have to keep referring back to the recipe. That's okay, though. I know. And then it's just the process of cleaning everything. Um, and it's just a lot. So actually, Sunday through Mm. Wednesday, sometimes Thursday, we cook. But Friday is like pizza night for you guys, right? Mexican. 
Mexican oh. food, Tex-Mex, that's what we do. Orlando already called me. You got your mind right? We're going to Tex-Mex tonight, right? Oh my gosh. So that's what's happening. That sounds so good. I know. So, but I just, Thursdays are difficult for us too because that's usually like the night if I have events or something like that, it's usually a Thursday night. Yeah. But our kids have practices until about eight o'clock on Thursdays. So it's Chick-fil-A or it's, you know, I'm running through Should somewhere. Drive through. Yeah. Well, after the end of a long day, and I know based on some of our viewer comments we've received, some of you are just as exhausted as the yes. rest of us, right? The last thing you want to do is get home and cook dinner. I find it yeah. overwhelming and that I don't have the mental capacity to focus on a recipe. But they say, though, studies have shown that the average person only knows how to make like four or five dishes without using a recipe. And it turns out, guys, what do you think, what do you think the item is that people make without a recipe? Toast. Oh, actually, that's on the list. <laughs> oh, that was number 11 of like the top 10 things people make. Okay. But it's all eggs. Eggs? Like the first four were all eggs. The it's... first one was scrambled eggs. Oh no, eggs over easy. Oh, easy. The second one, scrambled eggs. Third, hard boiled eggs. Four, poached eggs. Oh, wow. But it's all, and what I love French is that toast. soup is on the list. Does that mean soup from a can? Please tell well, me no. I hope not. They know but... how to make soup without a recipe? Opening a can without a recipe, I would hope. Grilled cheese. I can make a mean grilled cheese. I'm like. Do you put butter on both famous. sides of the? Oh yeah. You know, grilled cheese and tomato soup with a pickle on the side. Nothing could better. eat it every Nothing day. Better. It's so good. <laughs> uh, Kara, one of our Facebook viewers, wrote in saying she loves to cook dinner. She's also a super picky eater. So oh, okay. that's great. So cooking to know what's in her food. Plus, it is healthier. It that is, is a lot so healthier. True. It's and so you true. save way more money when you cook at home. You really do. Hey, so we have been doing our taxes. And we totaled up. You know, we look through the year's expenses. I'm Don't not going to. Oh, I would never say, but it's ridiculous oh, no. how much money what I'm saying is we spend when you eating out. At it. Oh my gosh, it's such a waste. That's the problem with having so many great restaurants in Houston. Y'all, you all know this too. Here's the thing when you go to the Costco or any of the grocery stores, the Costco. Right, you buy all this stuff and then you're overwhelmed or it's late and you come home and you're like, I don't want to cook. So <laughs> that now, happens to ordering me all the time. out. That happens all the time. I know. I, I feel like I hit the jackpot with Brandon because he cooks all the time. Orlando. See, and it's, a, it's an amazing skill, and I feel like it is such a great act of love to cook for someone, mm -hmm. to spend that time, and he's usually home a little before I am in the evenings, so I get home and dinner's there, and then he doesn't let me clean up. It's amazing. Oh. I would oh. starve. Listen, Orlando, I have before. Orlando's a really great cook great creator does it all but man is he messy oh i know like a tornado oh. all the cabinets are open in everything's the open all, everything every pot is being used he does he I'm, has a homemade salsa recipe oh, right yeah. we just got a huge food processor mm -hmm. and brandon and his mom are taking a little mother-son trip little road trip this weekend so i'm home alone I got a date with the food processor. Oh, okay. okay. It's gonna. <laughs> I mean, what am I gonna do? Oh, and I'm gonna go buy some more plants tomorrow. Oh. He's gonna be so mad. Don't tell him. Oh, don't tell him. Guys, I am buying do more plants. Do you have plants. enough sunlight and oxygen in your place for more plants? We're gonna talk about this next week, but you know the flora culture? They were on our show when we did the wreaths. Love them. So Chimney Rock, guys, they have these incredible plants. I'm not gonna tell you what they are because I'm afraid you're gonna go buy them, but they're rare Monstera plants from Thailand, and they're albinos, so they're green and white. I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm gonna tell you everything about it. <laughs> I'll tell you next week. I'm going to have a great photo. Trust me, Mom, you're going to love this. You're going to love it. Uh, okay, Monster Jam, let's talk about it. I know. I, I don't even know what to say after these plans. The most action-packed <laughs> motorsports experience for families in the world is returning to Houston this weekend. And you know this well because you've taken the boys before. Monster Jam roars into NRG. Huge stadium right tomorrow on Sunday featuring the ultimate mix. High-flying action, yep. four-wheel excitement. I don't know. It makes me a little bit nervous. But Lauren Kelly certainly is not nervous. She is on the dirt right now to give fans a sneak peek of what they can expect. Lauren. One of my favorite things about NRG Stadium is how it can transform to anything, and we are here for Monster Jam right now. And I am here with one of the Monster Jam champions, Todd LaDuke. Yeah. Thank you for taking me into your house, really. Welcome, welcome. This is where I work. Your dirt house. It's so nice. Unbelievable. I love Houston. We always love coming here. We're the very first show of two shows, so I'm very excited. Look at these jumps. They're massive. I can't, they're so tall. I can't even imagine. I, I get scared when I hop a curb by accident. I can't imagine being in a vehicle and going over those hills and those humps. It's crazy. You're going to freak out. You're going to love it. But yeah, it, do, it doesn't get old. Uh, I've won two World Championships right now. I'm the current leader of our championship tour. That's the leader. He's the biggest 
biggest winner of all. So yeah, it's been going great, but we have great drivers here, El Toro Loco, Grave Digger, and so many other great drivers. So you've been driving for how long? Nine years. So it's been a great run so far. So I just want to keep it going and uh, hopefully keep winning. How did you do on your very first driver's test? Oh my gosh, I did great. I passed <laughs> okay. my very first time. That's a good thing, because I want us to get in one of the big trucks today. Can we do that? Yeah, enough talking. Okay. Let's get off this dirt. Okay. Let's get up into one of these trucks, and okay. I want you to feel what I feel. <laughs> I have to climb in. Because Come on, let's go. I'm going to have to take these stairs. I don't know if you can see these tires. Just take a look at the tires. From where I'm standing, they're legitimately as tall as I am. They are huge. And this is the BKT truck. Can I just climb on Sl up? Climb right, right on right. up. I'm gonna and then hold sit on. on the right. I'm gonna sit on the right. Oh my Last goodness. chair. It's always you, fun. It's so big. It's so big. Right here. Right okay. here. Right here. Yep. Right this one. Okay. Right I'm gonna sit right here. And they have seat belts, you guys. There's seat belts for a reason. Should we buckle in? Oh yeah. This okay. is this is a race truck. <laughs> This is a race truck, so you're about to get a ride. All right, so this is normally a truck that you would be driving, right? This is a, the BKT ride truck, so not very many people get to ride with us in the trucks. We only have one seat, so what better way to give people rides than right here in the BKT ride truck? That's amazing. During the show, do you have the helmet and protective gear? How do you stay safe when you're actually doing flips and turns and going over these crazy hills? No, it's true. I think a lot of it is uh, you know, mental awareness and just, we're always one with the truck. We feel like we're just flowing out there. We know where we are at all times and uh, at any time, the officials can cut us. So, you know, if we get hurt or something doesn't look right, they can stop us. But uh, yeah, we're very, very safe. We have head, head whipping uh, control, we okay. have helmets, we have driving suits. So uh, we're very, very safe. And so you guys do something really cool. It's the Monster Jam pit party you're having before each of the shows. You get to meet fans, you get to interact with them. They get to see you and shake your hand yeah. and be like, this is the this is the real holding hand, yeah. you know? That's really cool that you guys get to do that because so many young people look up to you guys so much and it's such a wonderful thing to be able to meet your heroes. No, it's amazing because I have two younger kids that are six and four. And you know what I mean? This is what's so unique about Monster Jam is you get to meet the drivers. You get to talk to the athlete themselves right to their face and say like, hey, I loved what you did last week or I, my son loves you or he loves your truck. So it's very amazing. We get to sign merch for all the kids and we get to sign for five hours before. So we get wow. to meet so many great fans and then build those relationships. Todd, is your son already trying to drive one of those power wheels? You're giving oh, yeah. him lessons on there he already? Does. He won. He drove one of the great <laughs> digger competitions. I, I am so unshocked right now. I know. All right, Todd. So we are in this automobile, this massive truck. What do you say we go for a ride in it? Should I be prepared and like hold on? There's actual holding like bars I need to be holding on <laughs> Look to. Look at me. I'm like, I'm like super <laughs> chill. Like, yeah, whatever. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. It's bouncy. We're 12 feet off the ground. That's what's so unique about these trucks is they're larger than life. We're, we're 12 feet in the air. How it's much crazy. do these things weigh? They weigh 12,000 pounds. Oh, my God. And they have 1,500 horsepower. What happened to those cars? Is that going to happen to us? Uh, maybe. <laughs> that was my driving test car. <laughs> Amazing ride. Todd LaDuke, thank you so much for having us with you. And best of luck in all of your future rides at Monster Jam. Thanks. For more information on the Houston Stop, just check out monsterjam.com. Yeah! <laughs> That was awesome. Laura looks awfully comfortable out there. I'm just saying. I know. You know, I, I got to tell you, it's such a fun experience. Bring your headphones, noise canceling. Gets really loud in there, but it is so much fun. It's a great, great time for the whole family. Very nice. And Monster Jam, by the way, is happening this weekend at NRG Stadium. You can buy tickets online at monsterjam.com. And coming up today on Houston Life, our thrift shop throwdown with thrift bloggers, two cheap blondes. As always, we only have 25 bucks to spend. We went head to head on a shopping challenge to see who could score the item with the highest retail value. We'll find out who wins coming up a little later. But first, are you drowning in debt? We're sharing a step-by-step -step foolproof guide to help you get your money right this year. We'll be right back. Seven. Well, paying off debt is not easy, but it's not impossible either. Here with a step-by-step -step guide to help you accomplish that get-out-of-debt resolution is certified financial planner and president of Shakiba Capital, Trevor Shakiba. Welcome back, Trevor. Thank you. Great to see you on this Friday. And we're always talking, or not, we have been talking about getting out of debt. It's one of the most popular resolutions that everybody wants to start the year off right. And sometimes, as we say, how do we eat an elephant? Because usually that's a big pile to tackle, right? right. One 
bite at a time. Absolutely. And, you know, we t we've talked about this all January. How do we get our money right? How do we kick 2020 off to make sure that we really make this the year that we get out of debt? We've talked a lot about uh, really everything related to debt. The thing that I heard the most from last week, well, this is great, but how do I actually get out of debt? Give right, like put step, it in motion, yeah, right? Step by step. And so that's what I want to talk about today. But Courtney, what I want to talk about first is this statistic. Okay. Because this is a shocker. 45% of Americans carry a credit card balance of approximately $16,000. That's the average balance in America today. Now think about it this way. If you only paid the minimum payment, yeah. That would be an additional 11,000 approximately that you would have to pay on top of that. That's why this is so important. We've got to figure out a way to get out of debt. Yeah, we've got to stop using the plastic and really tackle the debt. And basically, how do we do that? Because as we're saying, it always sounds good on paper or right. on TV, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I think is to make a decision, make a resolution, draw the line in the sand. Hey. I am going to get out of debt or I'm going to make significant progress this year. So here's what I say. Put it all down on paper, on a spreadsheet. I don't care how bad it looks. You've got to figure out what it is. So put it all down. Tell someone, anyone, tell someone because accountability goes a long, a long way. And my last uh, real, really important point here is, is think about writing it down, mm -hmm. not just once, but every morning when you get up, because magical things happen when you write things down, it keeps your mind on it. Absolutely, and it's it, it, you're seeing it all the time, and, and you always mention this too, Trevor, it's all about the accountability. If you never put pen to paper, it's hard to kind of reach any goal, exactly. and especially when you're dealing with money. What's great too is when you start seeing those numbers get smaller, even if it's a minimal amount, you're chipping away at it. Yeah. I think psychologically that does a lot for, you know, it shows some progress. Yeah, momentum. It's a big, big deal. My second thing, it, very similar to that, is, okay, now you know where everything is. Right. It's time to negotiate. Okay, negotiate with the companies? Negotiate, or? exactly, with the people that hold the debt. Okay. Everything is negotiable, okay? That's the first thing that, 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 that everyone needs to know. And so sometimes all it takes is a simple phone call with confidence to say, hey, look, I'm paying this debt off. I'm going to go to one card. What can you do for me? Even if they lowered a couple percentage points, are they perhaps even able to lower the amount? That is a big deal. Make everyone compete for your business. Okay, so make that phone call and say, you're either going to lose me as a customer or you're going to keep me, basically, right? What can you do for me? Okay, I like it. Be strong. There you go. And also in that, you say develop a strategy. Don't just walk into this one day and think it's all going to magically fall into place. Right, so that's number three. This is where it gets tough. You have to do <laughs> some work. What is the plan? So here's a couple quick uh, uh, options. We've talked about it before. There's a snowball method, right? which means that you attack the lowest debt balance first, not the highest interest rate, but the lowest debt balance first, and you start to pay those off, and then you take that payment plus what you're doing, and you move to the next one, so it snowballs. The other one is the highest interest rate first. They call that the debt avalanche method. I don't know who comes up with these names, <laughs> but you go after the highest interest rate first and go from there. My last tip here is think about automating. So get it on automation so you're not apt to maybe not do it a couple months and then you lose momentum. Okay, so that means automate all those payments, right? Exactly. Okay, get that done and you're not missing anything, which ends up hurting you as well. Um, let's talk about consolidation. We mentioned this, like I'm going to switch over and get consolidate to one card, but you say there's there's something to be watch out for. Yeah, I think it's potential a great strategy. Everyone, I'm sure, knows what I'm talking about. You get that stuff in the mail. Hey, go to this card, 0%. Right. The reason I say be careful is, is because you need to watch what the introductory terms are, how long that is, and what it will revert to on the interest rate. And the final point here is sometimes you're not allowed to make new purchases. So the new purchases will be at a higher rate than what you moved over. Lots of fine print. But remember, you can also consolidate in other ways related to loan options, peer-to-peer -peer lending, personal loans, bank loans. Look at your options there. Sometimes consolidation can make a lot of sense. Okay, we have about 30 seconds left, and basically the bottom line is if you don't know where to begin or you feel like you're under a huge pile of debt, 
Seek some help. Yeah, seek some help. It could be with a financial planner. It could be with someone that specializes in debt uh, consolidation or getting rid of debt at your church through the Dave Ramsey program. Right. Seek some help. If you are still lost and you, or you find yourself not making progress, this is too critical, too important to let go again, and then you're just in this ever-revolving situation of debt. Yeah, and also, you keep them accountable. That's yes. one thing that we're working big on. one. Trevor, thanks so much. By the way, to connect with Trevor, all you need to do is visit ShakibaCapital.com. Thanks so much for being yeah, here. Yeah, thank you. We'll be right back. Who doesn't love scoring great clothing for less? We all do. And now imagine scoring high-end labels at a thrift store. Say it isn't so. Uh, I think it is so. Thrift bloggers, Too Cheap Blonde, certainly do. They put us to the test in a brand new edition of Thrift Shop Throwdown. The goal was to see, between us, who could find a clothing item with the highest original retail value. And as usual, Courtney, you know this, we only had 25 bucks to spend. Well, Derek won the previous two throwdowns, but let's find out if third time is the charm. Y'all know I am always up for a shopping challenge and I've got half of two cheap blondes, <laughs> Jen, with me. So our challenge today is to see between you and I and Pippa and Derek who can find the most high-end item for under $25. Okay, girl, we are 0 for 2. We are 0 for challenge. 2, but I'm feeling good today. I am too. Is this going to be easy? <laughs> Well, we cart. can you find tell it. Me where to go. We can find it. Let's go to the men's section. Okay, Jen, so we're getting started shopping, and what's the best advice if we are thrifting? Where do we begin in a store like this? Right, so since our goal today is to find the best bang for our buck, we're going to want to start at jackets. Jackets, be it blazers or long coats, because they're really expensive. I mean, your average retail, even at a place like Banana Republic, is about 150 bucks. Right. And then just, you know, the sky's the limit once you get into higher end brands. But here at the thrift store, you're going to pay between probably 10 to $20, so really great return on your investment. Oscar De Laurenta, you have oh an eye. Goodness. Let's see. Oh, wool and cashmere? Okay, so okay. that's a nice blend. Okay. The size does look a little big for me, but let's hold on to it okay. and see how it fits. This is J. Crew. I'm gonna guess your retail on this one is like 200 pushing 200 bucks, right? Right, so we're gonna hold on to this, okay. but I think we can do better. Okay. Oh man, Pippa, this coat section. It's cozy time of year. Look at that. Huh, it's a nice gold jacket. Very vintage, Steinbach. Steinbach. You know. Tie roll. Like look, even used, that one's 500 bucks. This, this is, is a cute. nice tweed, and this is Sandro. Oh. This is a French brand Yeah. that is very high end. I'm gonna guess this jacket retails for the high 400s, low 500s, so. Okay, put that in the I'm thinking this may be our winner. <laughs> that one may I'm be it. The same price, 545. Wait a minute, this has tags on it. It does. The embroidery on that, okay. This just looks like you. Okay, I'm gonna try this. We'll take a gamble on that one. Okay. I think we found our winner. Uh-oh. I don't know that we can do better than this. So this is Roberto Quaglia, which you've probably never heard of, but it is a very high-end designer. It's sold in local boutiques, and I'm going to put the retail on this jacket of over $1,000. Low thousands, but over $1,000, probably $1,100, $1,200. On clearance here, it's half off for $1,901. Oh, so. my word. What? This is cool. You know, Piva, the problem with coming to these thrift stores is that I get a little bit off track. I've never put suspenders on a person. What do you think? <laughs> Ooh, Calvin Klein. Uh, maybe a little too big for me, though, right? Is it so a yes or a no? Is it a 10? Yeah, I could see you wearing that. You, you wear that preppy stuff. I'm not going to get it based on what you just said. Time to hit the dressing room. I'm going to try on my three jackets, but this might be winner, winner, chicken dinner. The most expensive item in here, I'm pretty sure. So long, Derek. You are not winning this challenge today. The grand total is $20.58. What did I do to you? So hateful. All right, time to try these bad boys on. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, I'm excited because it fits well. Look at this, brand new. 
with tax. Okay, this is so you. Now, this isn't necessarily high end, but okay. I feel like this is your style and this is something that you would wear and you're gonna rock it. I think so too. Out of all the jackets or coats I tried on today, this definitely has the best fit, seems most like my style. So we'll keep our fingers crossed, hope for the best. Yeah, I love it on you. $2, it's a deal. Wait a minute, this is really only $2? Okay. Well, uh, you can hold on to that. Okay, you saved some money. That. Thank you. Wow, $2? Well, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. I love the jacket, that's what counts, right? Yeah. Plus, I think it's Courtney's turn to win. <laughs> uh, the suspense is killing me. I know, but I'm pretty sure I won. You have a good feeling? I do. Okay, well, let's find out after the break. How about that? Up next, we will reveal the winner of our thrift shop throwdown, plus how to look high-end for way less. The two cheap blondes will join us right after this. Dot com. Tonight on NBC. Well, welcome back. Before the break, Derek and I went head to head in our thrift shop throwdown. And as you can see, Courtney and I loved our finds so much, we decided to change into them during our commercial break. Remember, our goal was to find the item with the highest retail value with a budget, a very low budget, of $25. Jen and Pippa are with us now. Welcome, ladies. This was so much fun. This was super always. fun. <laughs> Okay, so uh, are we about to announce the winner? Should we just do it now, get it over yeah, with? Let's yeah, let's do it. Okay, who is the winner? Courtney! Finally! Finally! finally. Oh. Yay! Yay. Um, so the retail value on this was what? $1,870. That's Shut amazing. It down. And wow. We spent $19.01. Perfect. What was the retail value on his? So, Derek, this jacket that he's wearing with the embroidered bumblebees mm -hmm. is very similar to a Gucci jacket, yeah. which retails for two thousand dollars. But this is this is a, a not. A, an Asian brand. <laughs> we weren't sure. We couldn't even un see the size of it or anything. Right. Said, Try it on. Maybe one of those brands that you see on Instagram I, where yeah, you order the, the clothing yeah. and it's like a triple X Yeah, XL. but it's still really nice quality. And this was eighty six twenty one, and we got it for $2. Okay, $2 that's pretty good. It's not bad. And there's a Gucci one like it, as you mentioned, and also like a Dolce & Gabbana jacket that has the B print. So it's not Dolce & Gabbana, folks. Bees are in. Two bucks. I like it. Are you going to wear it? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, and what's great about it, I put this jacket on, and we knew the moment I put it on, it felt like my jacket. It fit me totally perfectly, as your coat does you. I love it too, and that's what I love about thrifting. I mean, you girls do this. This is what you do to cheap blondes. You go into the thrift stores daily. But when we want to do this, this is something you can't just expect to pop into a thrift store and think you're going to hit it. Right, I mean, it's, it's, it's stressful knowing that you guys are coming, going, oh my gosh, are we gonna find something today? But I mean, we've always, we were 100% success rate so far. So yeah, so far. We did, we just pulled it out that day, that so, jacket. And sometimes it's the unexpected find, like a pair of giant underwear that I never thought I would find at a thrift store. You but never know. that was memorable, you right? Never know. <laughs> okay, so today you've brought along some models just to further underscore this idea that if you're willing to put in some time and some work, you can find some pretty incredible deals. Right, absolutely. All right, well, let's get started. We have our first look, and this is Immaculate coming in, and uh, this is a big name brand, isn't it? This is. So Immaculate is wearing this Escada. Gorgeous. Cashmere blend coat that we picked up at the Family Thrift Outlet for just $2. Unbelievable. A cashmere blend? Cashmere blend. Cashmere. And oh so gosh. the retail price on this is $27.95. We're talking $2,795. And for just two bucks. And the reason why this ended up there, it does have a few little moth holes on the collar. Oh. But if you notice, we added some little bee pins up there just to cover them up. And so now she's fully accessorized. And we got these pins on Harwin for a couple dollars each. You gotta talk about her boots. And Love she her. is, yeah. sorry, we, she is wearing these fabulous YSL boots that she found herself at a garage sale oh. for just $5. Way to go, girl. You scored you big time. a St. Laurent boot for $5? That is a score, because their boots easily are over $1,000. Oh, easily, mm -hmm. easily. So cool. yeah, so Immaculate is ready for, uh, Ready for the winter here in this great looking outfit. I know, and that jacket she'll have forever. That color is perfect on you as well. Immaculate, thank you. 
Very, Looking very nice. Perfect. Ileana is our next model. Come on out. Yes, and Ileana is wearing this silk uh, velvet intermix dress. This dress retails for $348. Um, they sell a very similar style right now online still, and we got it at Goodwill for $7.99. Unbelievable, and it fits perfectly. Yes. The color is gorgeous. It's so on trend, yes. and really that's a timeless dress. Exactly. A wrap dress, you know, you can wear it. You know, especially for the holidays, it's absolutely beautiful yeah. in that dark green color. Yeah, and the set cinched in waist is so just universally flattering. Right. It's a great style. That's a major score. Ileana, thank you so much. All right, our next model, Zochi, come on out. All right, and so Zochi is ready for the rodeo because we are oh, almost yeah. here at rodeo it's that time season. Of year. And so we <clears> spotted this dress once again at the Family Thrift Outlet for just $2, and it is a Chelsea and Violet brand. So the retail on this is a little over $100. Not the highest in brand, but still for two bucks, that's a really great deal. Yeah, and a trendy piece as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, very much on trend, very young, super cute. And we paired them with these vintage cowboy boots that we picked up at the Family Thrift Outlet once more for $2. Wow. Just threw some polish on those, and they look great. Yeah, and if she could just turn her heel, because it actually has a little bit stacked heel, which is really interesting Very as well. Trend. Yeah. Also, I think it's so great that, especially for rodeo season, if you're not wearing Western wear around the calendar, many people do, but if you don't, right. why go out and spend hundreds of dollars on an outfit you're going to wear once, once a year? Right. Right. Maybe twice? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. cheap. So Very she looks nice. looks great. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Adele. Yeah, Adele is next. Okay. This outfit that we put together is just amazing. She's wearing this Reformation blouse. We found it Goodwill for $5.99. She's wearing a vintage black velvet blazer, and we found that for $2. And again, we embellished it with these bumblebee pins that we found at Harwin. I think they were 2 to $3 a piece. Awesome. But they make such a huge statement. And then these boots, they're Burberry boots. We found these in the Goodwill uh, thrift bins and everything, their clothing is $1.19 a pound. The shoes so, are $1.19. Shoes are $1.19 a pound. So these boots were a little over a pound, so under $2. Oh, for my Burberry boots. Isn't that crazy? And they are super on trend with the booty style. Yeah, the whole outfit. All, all of the outfits are amazing. I had no idea you could buy shoes by the pound at a thrift store. That's a whole... This is the outlet. Excitement. Goodwill outlet. <laughs> wow, it's like buying apples, only not. <laughs> only um, it's shoes. Adele, thank you so much. Yeah, like apples, but Burberry instead. <laughs> a different type of berry. Yes, exactly. All right, let's bring out our final model, and this is Roman. Right. Welcome to the show. Roman is a good friend of ours, so we have been dressing him for the last few years. He is an actor and a musician. Very nice. And so we like to dress him for his red carpet events, for his gigs, and this outfit was something we put together for one of his recent gigs, and we put him in this uh, vintage suede top here with a top, a uh, little tea underneath. We picked both pieces up from Family Thrift Outlet for $2. Obviously our favorite store. Right. Such great deals. But um, yeah, Roman looks great and he is wearing these great leather cuffs that he made himself, by the way. Oh, fantastic. Thought, really nice. just upped his cool factor. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> great accessory. And by the way, two bucks for a vintage suede jacket? Yeah. Right. That is a great find. You look very sharp, very polished. Well, ladies, yeah. thank you so much for coming by. And thanks to all of our models. You all look fantastic. And thanks for uh, helping us find these cool Thanks for jackets. the win, by the way. <laughs> and to connect with Two Cheap Blondes, visit the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. Well-deserved win. Congratulations. Thank you. You did pretty well, too. Thank you. We'll be right back. Well, the latest advancements in medicine benefit patients of all ages, including infants. At only four months old, Kate was diagnosed with a condition that made it difficult for her skull to grow properly. Doctors were able to help Kate with a new minimally invasive approach to cranial surgery. And here with her story, please welcome pediatric plastic surgeon with UT Physicians, Dr. Fung Nguyen, along with Kate and her parents, Marissa and Sean Medlin. Welcome to the show. Thank Kate you. is yeah. absolutely adorable. Tomorrow is her 10-month anniversary. Yes. We are planning our her one month her her one year birthday party right now as we speak. It's Happy and healthy. Yes. But yes. back us up to uh, just a few months ago when you noticed when she was born, you noticed that something seemed a little bit off. Yep. So, I'm nursing her, so you know, you get a lot of face time and one-on-one -on -one time during yeah. those first couple of weeks. So, um, I noticed that her nose was a little crooked and she also, her eyes were different shaped. One was more round, one was more almond. And so I brought it up to our pediatrician at her two month, her two week check-in. 
and she referred us to an ENT who kind of checked everything out and said, no, everything's normal, it's just part of the birthing process. Mm. Um, it'll correct over time. So we kind of just let everything go. Well, about four months, our pediatrician was still like, oh, I don't know, it just, it's not getting better. I would prefer that you guys went and saw um, the craniofacial team at UT and just kind of had everything checked out and we're so glad we did because we didn't know it at the time, but that was the beginning of a process of something that we needed to go through to get her corrected. She is so precious. I love Thank that. You. She's doing the raspberries over here. <laughs> I love it. Your mic is working. Uh, Dr. Wynn, this is one thing that I think is really interesting. It, it's a parent's intuition, right? You were breastfeeding. You noticed something was maybe not right and it wasn't quite sure, you know, is this normal? Is it not normal? Is it something minor? And luckily those those checks and balances were in place to then get to refer to you because the diagnosis then came through. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, we're very lucky uh, here at UT that we can see a lot of patients who come through with this diagnosis. So if, if that's on the back of your mind, it's going to be the first thing that you think of. Right. The diagnosis, by the way, is craniosynostosis. Turns out it's one in about 2,500. Explain what the diagnosis actually is. Sure. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but craniosynostosis is essentially the fusion of your cranial sutures. Now, what is that? We're born with a skull that is essentially movable. That's how the baby gets through the birth canal. And it's fused with these little uh, areas of fibrous attachments called sutures. They're not supposed to fuse until your 20s, but they can fuse much more earlier, so particularly when you're a baby. So what happens is then the skull becomes misshapen and the brain has nowhere to go. And the brain is unable to develop and unable to grow. So it's really important that that's opened up so that we allow that brain to grow. And so you uh, went through the whole process, mom and dad too, of what's next, right? How do we fix the problem? And I bet that was scary to hear the type of surgery that Kate had to have. Yeah, it got, it, it, things became very real yeah. uh, once we went and saw Dr. Wynn. Uh, I'll never forget, you know, he looked at Kate and he said, I'll be right back. And he steps out, he comes back in with a normal skull and then a skull that was uh, like Kate's, uh, that with the deformity on it. And you know, as a parent, you, 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 you want to think that your kids are you know, healthy and there's nothing wrong, but that's, that's, what, that's when things got pretty real for us. And as you mentioned, a, a skull with a different shape, it's not just about a deformation of the skull, it's about altering brain activity mm -hmm. in the future. Let's talk about the treatment that Kate experienced because I understand she's the first one in Texas and I think we have some pictures which by the way include some scarring so <laughs> we're just warning our viewers. But Dr. Wynn, explain the process, how it all went down. Sure, just to give you some historical perspective, uh, we've been doing this type of surgery for craniosynostosis for decades. The traditional method is something called a frontal orbital advancement. And what that is, is essentially taking the skull apart, moving it into various pieces, and reshaping it, putting it back together with little plates and screws. My goodness, so quite a surgery. So it's not a small surgery. But this was different than that process. So this is different. So we utilized a device called a distractor. What that is, think of it as a little car jack. Essentially, it's a device that slowly pushes the bones apart over time. And as you can see there, there's a, that, that little that turning metal lever, device. That little metal device. And just two turns a day slowly will push that skull apart. Now that has two advantages. Number one, we can do things over a period of time where we don't have to stretch the skin. So that's not our limiting factor. Number two, the amount of surgery and dissection uh, is significantly less, making it much safer and much more of a uh, minimally invasive approach. Quicker recovery, I Yeah, assume. and right now, I mean, we're looking at Kate. She's great. I can see barely the scar, but just because her hair is covering it, in, in a year or so, won't even see it, right? Oh, absolutely. And Marissa and Sean, during this process, you were just turning a full crank every day. Is that how it worked? Yep, so we turned it twice a day, um, two, two times each day for 25 days, I think is where we ended up at.
So. And that was that was pretty intense. I was. Uh, that imagine, that yeah. was, and that was probably harder on us than it was Kate. Um, you know, to, to do that. But uh, you know, after Dr. Wynn explained the approach to it, it, it totally made sense. Well, a more advanced procedure and good news for parents who may be facing the same situation. Sean, Marissa, Kate, thank you so much for sharing your story. Dr. Wynn, thank thanks for all the work that you do. And in the meantime, if you would like more information, you can visit the UT Physicians website, <laughs> utphysicians.com, or you can call 888-4-UT-DOCS. We'll be right back with more Houston Life. <laughs> Nicely done, Kate. I know. Houston.com. Well, welcome back. If you're looking to spruce up your home, why not start now with an easy bathroom renovation done in as little as one day? Tara Harvey with Bath Fitter is here with some amazing ideas to get a sparkling brand new bathroom. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. What exactly does Bath Fitter do? Let's just start with the basics. Okay, so our specialization is the tub over tub liners but we also do showers. So really our MO is that we come in in one day and completely redo your bathtub. And that's a game changer because a lot of people may be thinking, especially this time of year, about updating the bathroom. People don't love the idea of having their homes torn up for weeks, if not months and on And not end. having a bathroom, And right? construction always takes yeah. longer yeah. than estimated. But you guys, you can really do it in one day? One day. You could go to work and come back and you have a new bathtub. And if you're spring cleaning, don't. Just get a new bathtub. <laughs> Just get a new one. Solve the problem. <laughs> and the good thing is, I know we're standing in front of one tub option, shower mm -hmm. option, but these are not the only options y'all have. I mean, there are thousands of things to basically design, right? Absolutely. There's so many variations, different colors of walls, different designs. I mean, there's over 800 tub molds. Um, you know, to begin with, so. And We're it's looking. super easy, too, on the website, but yeah. The before and after photos, I think that is what really speaks yeah. for itself, right? I mean, look at that. You guys, when you come in, you're not just like redoing a tub, right, or fitting something over a tub. You're essentially doing the entire wet area enclosure, right? Absolutely, from top to bottom if that's what you want. But some people don't need, they only need maybe a wall or something like that, or the tub, and they just spent money on one element of it and they think, well, they're disqualified. We can do that. If you only want the tub, we can do the tub. If you only need the wall, we can do the wall. That's oh, great, so cu customizable as well. What about the process? Um, does it only take care of, you know, you said it's not just the tub. So right. you can do the whole thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. So really what we do um, from top to bottom is the consultation. I mean, we're masters in vertical integration. The consultation, the production, the installation. Also, it's all in America. Like, hashtag America. That's <laughs> us. Like, every single part of this. Let's talk about the customization process because some of the before and after photos we've seen on the screen and the video we're seeing now, how, how custom can this be? I mean, are there truly endless options? If someone wants to go all white, they can do that, but they can also add little detail elements. They can do a tub or no tub. They can do a tub that's for people who have limited mobility. Right, so really, it's kind of like the Cheesecake Factory menu. Like, there are so many <laughs> options. Whatever you want, you can get it. We have the fixtures, we have safety features, just anything that you need. You can pick and choose, just like a menu. And it's really easy to do. As you're seeing right now, the screen, this is what you do. You go through the process online if you want to see what your design choices would look like, straight down to the hardware. Absolutely. It's design your own bath. It's just, it's fun to play with. You yeah. Know? Even if you're not in the market, it's like, this is, this is what I would have if I could have it. But you can. You just have to call us. We've heard of other renovation methods. I don't want to call my friends out by name, but they reglaze their tub. You know, they had this old tub, right, in a bathroom, yeah. and they went through the reglazing process, which involves chemicals and smells and the whole bit, whatever. But it's already chipping. It's not lasting. So talk us through some of the differences between bath fitter and other processes like just reglazing a tub. Right. So, I mean, you said it. It's the chemicals. It's the fumes. It's dangerous for your family. But longevity-wise, it's only going to last a couple of months. So bath fitter is a permanent solution to the problem. It's not the temporary solution. Well, and, I mean, when you say, sorry to jump in, Courtney, but yeah. permanent, like how long can we expect it to last? Um, let's see. Probably forever, I think, and then like 10 years. <laughs> you have a very <laughs> dry that? sense of humor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were serious. So it's a lifetime. Lifetime. Lifetime guarantee. It's a permanent solution. It's awesome. Listen, wow. and there are millions of happy customers. You guys really have yeah. some stellar ratings out there. Absolutely. One of our mottos is, you know, we want you to smile every time you look at your bathtub, which is, you know, it could be weird, but it works in this case. Yeah. <laughs> is it true that some of your customers have been five-star hotels? 
Absolutely. And that's the cool thing. We come into your house and we redo your bathroom and we use the same elements. So it's kind of like having a little vacation when you're at your home. I love that. Yeah. So By the cool. way, let's talk about the special offer because if people have this on their list, it can be affordable. You can have the options. You can have the mm -hmm. contemporary look, not something that's outdated. You can have it now with a really great offer. Yep. And one day. In one day. Okay, so there's day. some info on your screen. That special offer, you can get 450 bucks off or financing available on a complete bath fitter system. And the first 20 callers will get an additional $150 off when they mention they saw this show, Houston Life. You know the name, folks. It's very easy. And uh, their website is also right there on your screen if you'd like more details and to get in on the offer. Schedule an appointment for a bathtub and shower remodeling. 713-987-4030 or their website, bathfitter.com. Easy enough. Tara, thank you. Oh, thanks for having us again. Cheers to a new bath and shower. Yes. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's time for our Cool Schools Weekly Spotlight, brought to you by Go Public Golf Coast. Today we're featuring the award-winning Cleveland High School Royal Braves Band in Cleveland ISD. It's so great. The Royal Braves Band has earned so many significant distinctions. All regions, all state and area musicians. They've also been consistent finalists at the UIL Area and National Association of Military Marching Bands Marching Contest. And for 64 of their 65-year history, the band has secured first division ratings at the UIL Marching Contest contest. The Royal Braves Band is not only the pride of Cleveland ISD, but also the entire city of Cleveland. To learn more about all of Houston's cool schools, you can visit gopublicgolfcoast.com. And in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today. This weekend, I'm going to be planting a lot of plants. Get it. <laughs> See you on Monday. Can't wait to hear all their names.